Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, family. Welcome to the mental house with me, your host, Khadija. You know, this is a, a spot that we have to deal with our mentals. Um, on in so many levels, we got so many people that are suffering. Um, and people know that they're suffering. And nobody gives a damn. And I'm coming here because there's a story that I've just got to report. I hate to even report that this is a residential district. And this is not a rural area where, you know, houses are spaced out pretty much so far away from each other that your neighbor could be really doing some nefarious things and no one is aware but this is a residential district in a residential neighborhood with neighbors. And this was allowed to happen in this household. Okay, just buckle up and um, receive this. I see blood everywhere. Even the little kids are talking about seeing mice and stuff running around in there. He was like keeping it alive. When Evansville police and EMTs receive an urgent 911 call describing a grisly attack by rats on a six-month-old infant, they immediately race to the scene. As paramedics race against time to save the child, it is the nature of the attack that leaves investigators sickened beyond their wildest imaginations. Yeah, I see his fingers. And I see that he, he, his fingers look like they've been chewed. Early in the morning on September 13th, 2023, police officers and EMTs quickly arrive at the Shanabom family home, expecting to see an injured baby off to a local hospital. But what they don't yet realize is the child's injuries and the infuriating reason behind them were something they never could have anticipated. Approaching the house, the officer can't help but notice the front porch is congested with toys, household objects, and heaps of trash. When he enters the house, he's greeted by Delana Thurman, the aunt of the victim, and David, the victim's father. Both are also looking after several crying children. I walked through the family this morning. <laughs> Yeah. That doesn't happen to the baby not make a sound. Now, let me let me kind of give you a backstory. They the police have been summoned to the house on a call that a baby has been bit by rats. Um, there are other children in the home who seem to be scurrying around and this home is, um, the outside is all cluttered with trash. The inside is, you know, totally in disarray. Uh, and this man is saying that he, he never heard the child cry at all. And from what the Officers describe that's almost an impossibility. Let's go. Officer Green proceeds to gain further details from Delena, David's sister-in-law. He finds out that all of the other four children are under the age of 10, two of which are Delena's children. So you're saying you didn't have a mark on him when you went to bed? No marks on him at all. No mark at all? Yeah. He laid him down. He was happy as could be. He fell asleep. We took yeah. him here to watch some. TV. What time was that? We Moments after the officer's arrival, EMTs enter the home to tend to the victim. The officer is stunned by the ferocity of the infant's injuries. You didn't mark all your fingers were like chewed off. I don't know what happened. They said it wasn't like that. Didn't hear you make a sound all night. I've been having this like a rat problem here about the trash everywhere, the paint box everywhere. 
I'll try as best I can. I just it doesn't know. happen in him not making sound all night. Wait. Here you go by myself. No, not right now. You can sit down. Can you talk to them? This is mom and dad get the rest. I can't talk to those people. I'm gonna lose it. Here, okay. here you go. You should have seen the baby. It's it's terrible. They said to make a sound all night. As more officers approach the scene, they are equally appalled by the disturbing injuries and the terrible conditions of the house the children live in. One of the nastier ones I've ever seen. It's so hard to contain the rage. Huh? Hard to contain oh. the rage. It's not no, all that bad. I don't want to have babies die. Situation, but the fact that he was in every case he was alive, you're telling me he didn't make a sound? Yes. <laughs> Are you serious? No way. He's in the house and knows how to diapers laying on the floor. Thank you. Well, I can already tell. I'm sorry, y'all. In case y'all didn't catch that, he said shitty diapers are laying all over the floor. The baby's fingers have been bitten down to the nubs. And this man claims that he hasn't heard anything all night. It's been quiet. And he had to go outside because he can't contain his rage. A six-month-old baby has literally been eaten alive by these rats. And I'm saying we got a serious mental problem in America. And if you can live across the street from this house and the visual of it is trash all on the outside of the house, trash all on the porch of the house, and rats running in and out of the damn house. And they got a baby and several children in there. Okay. I get it. How about Did I show you the picture said? Oh, well, like his fingers were too. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, like, 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 he was like eating a lot. Really? All of them? Uh, I can only really pick up but the whole hand just chewed up. With the baby finally receiving treatment in the ambulance, it was time to dig deeper into how such a grotesque attack on the child went unnoticed. The suspects are clearly being less than truthful, and officers must get to the bottom of it. Police isolate the victim's father, David, for questioning. He just wants to see. I have, look, listen, just listen. I have no idea what's going on. I just got here, but I want to talk to you. But I'm, you're not under arrest or anything. But I'm going to read you your rights before I talk to you, okay? Nice going, Lou. Nothing like a little confidence boost to help you. Of course, that also is. Uh, as you know, kids up ready for school this morning. Okay. Uh, I went in there like a uh, vendor, went in there to. to uh, you hear my up? And I see blood everywhere. So I yell him up. I was like, okay, where's the blood coming from? I worked for AMR for a while. Okay. I was like, where's the blood coming from? You know, so did he have a nosebleed? Did he have ear bleed? I know the amount of blood, and I see his fingers. And I see that he, he his fingers look like they've been chewed on. And Okay, what does he sleep in? Like a crib? Or? He has a, a bassinet. A, a bassinet? A bassinet that's on the... I like to stand up, you know, off the floor. Okay. And it's in the corner of the room. Never had any any issues. So you think the dog was too long? No, on fingers, no, or? no. Uh, we have a rat problem here. I've been trying to get rid of them. I've got Terminex here. I've got bait box. I've got traps. Okay. All of that. And, and it's like... Okay. The baby's mother, Angel Shawnabom, was reportedly staying in a nearby mental health facility and wasn't present during the attack on the infant. David brings the officer to his son's room, where the incident occurred. You don't want to look in there, it's fine. The blood-soaked bassinet and boppy pillow create a scene like something out of a horror movie. A defenseless infant would not have stood a chance fending for himself against what was likely a multiple rodent attack. The officer only has time for a brief look before David becomes overwhelmed. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Let's get you some... Let's get you some cigarettes. And, and my boy, you know. I, I know. Oh. They're, gonna, they're gonna help him, okay? 
As David paces through the house, the children are becoming restless, realizing something is very wrong. When David is able to take a minute to calm down on the front porch, officers gather near the ambulance to compare notes. Despite the house's condition, the question of how this many rodents were infesting the property and the role the adults played remain to be discovered. Is it both hands? The right hand is the worst, the left one is, for lack of a better term, more superficial. Okay. Feet. Uh, no major, nothing really noted on his back. Uh, groin area looks okay, a little bruised in the perineum. According to the police incident report, the baby had over 50 rat bites all over his body. Despite the terrifying wounds on his left hand, it was his right hand, however, that had the EMTs deeply concerned about the child's well-being. He would need a blood transfusion when he arrived at the hospital, as the wounds were nearly fatal. We're we'll going to muffle that before us. Uh, morning, Beth. Let's uh, get angry enough to say hello to the parents. I'm assuming they're not coming to the hospital. No. Absolutely not. All right. I don't know how you wouldn't hear us. Just have to choose, maybe. I. And if he wasn't, he would be something like while the officer continues to speak with David, the children are growing restless inside as an officer tries to calm them down. Until one other person comes, and then maybe we'll get to go to school, okay? Everybody! I know, Bobby, it's getting the help that you need. I want to show you. I want to show you. Out of this house. Push it out. 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 Push it you did? Yeah. Tell me, I just spotted him a little morning. Okay. And if I was yeah, yeah. running, yeah. and I just stared. Yeah. And he kind of like, and he was dead. Yeah. And why? If mm -hmm. I can see him. Mm -hmm. Very, very quick. He got this. And I can't see him. Let me get out of this house. Tell me. Oh my God. Hearing the child's haunting plea to leave is heartbreaking. They clearly recognize the danger they're all in. After a few minutes, the officers take them outside to play, hoping some activity would oh lighten their God. moods and ease their stress. Come here. There you go. What's your favorite thing to draw? Ooh, that's a triangle. Yeah, I like it. You like triangle? What color chalk would you like to use? Can you draw me a flower? Yeah, I want it. In a minute. <laughs> In a minute. <laughs> draw a flower. I'll make you a flower. If I can bend down. <laughs> Around this time, officers discuss their horrifying observations, planning a way to rescue the remaining children. I told Dad that we're going to keep all the kids here. Okay. Because they need, they all need to be checked out. I looked and I asked them if well, they had boo boos, nobody had boo boos. They're all, the, even all, the little kids are talking about seeing mice and stuff running around in there. Officers in DCS guide David back inside to gain a better idea of the recent conditions of the house. In stark contrast to the serenity in the yard, the house is in a state of chaotic disrepair. Used diapers are littered across the floor along with garbage and clutter. The house was reportedly smelling foul and there were a number of visible rat traps. Despite the disturbing state of the living room and the bloody nightmare in the baby's bassinet, officers still don't know that they've only scratched the surface.
In the bedroom, the team of officers photographed the mess, blood stains, and rat tracks, processing the scene and taking pictures of the area for evidence. With DCS and police investigating the bedroom together, an yeah. official from the DCS has a moment to share some interesting information. You guys have pictures? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Like previous pictures? Oh, yes. That's right. The DCS is very familiar with the Shonabom family. In fact, there have been three ongoing cases and one decided case attached to David specifically. Beginning in December of 2022, there was one claim of neglect and one claim of lack of supervision. Finally, in January of 2018, David was charged with neglect of a dependent with endangerment, a level six felony, but the court withheld judgment, sentencing him to suspended probation, providing very little recourse for his actions. Wow. In February 2021, David was charged with possession of substance, for which he received one year of a suspended probation sentence. While a case manager visited the home once a week, it was clearly not enough to prevent the unspeakable attack on the baby, Crystal nor did it prevent the other four children from potentially being exposed to serious diseases due to the animal feces and rodents. In the kitchen, the mess goes from bad to nauseating. In the police report, David stated he believed there was a dead rat behind the stove and decided to replace the appliance. Delena adds that this renovation caused garbage to pile up in the kitchen, making the trash situation far worse. Uh. Rats scampered away when they opened the door to the kitchen, forcing David and Elena to lock the door to prevent the children from going inside. Is this a closet over here? Investigators move through the house. They notice one of the family dogs has a scratch on his nose. Officers photograph the dog and begin confronting David further about his use of rat traps. Dog got a scratch on his nose too. Yeah, I don't know what's wrong unless I found that rat or something. Uh. I'll put it down through there when we go in. See that? According to the police report in a follow-up interview at the station, Delena additionally states that there has never been a rat in the children's room. However, in the weeks prior to the attack on the baby, two of the children told a school teacher they'd been bitten by mice on their toes. Delena suggested these marks were made by the children's bed frames. Oh, Unfortunately, the school nurse could not conclusively confirm the source of the marks. As the inspection comes to a close, David tries to justify his actions once again, but the officers aren't willing to allow him any more chances. I, I would never, never guess this. I, uh, I mean, my feet cheese and... Yeah. Uh, that's my... No, 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 I don't either. I mean, I'm not saying I wouldn't have guessed, like I said. My, I, I've never... 
I mean, if I'd seen one, if I saw one, I'd be, I'm just saying, everyone's got their own, obviously, you can't do something move or whatever, so I mean, you'll be a rat, and you might not think it might happen, but I'm just saying, I mean, rats are rats, so... David was in fact able to secure housing that same day for his family, but it was too late. DCS removed all five children from their parents' care soon after. Delana Thurman was charged with two counts of neglect on a dependent, which places the dependent in a situation that endangers them. On January 17, 2024, Delana accepted a plea agreement for both counts of her indictment and received a two-year suspended sentence on probation. David Shonabom was charged with one count of neglect on a dependent for each of the children who had not been attacked, and one count of neglect on a dependent resulting in serious injury, all of which were felonies. He was on probation at the time the crimes were committed. On October 2nd, 2024, David was found guilty on all charges and was sentenced to 16 years in Indiana's Department of Corrections. While Angel Shonabom, the child's mother, was not present at home at the time, she had been present during previous interventions and visits from the DCS. Having taken no action to improve the living conditions at home, Angel was charged with two level six felony counts of neglect on a dependent for each of the children who had not been attacked, and one level three felony count of neglect on a dependent resulting in serious injury. However, in September 2024, Angel Shonabom took a plea deal and pleaded guilty to a level five felony neglect charge which is lesser than the original level three charge. She also pleaded guilty as charged to two level six felony neglect charges. On October 24th, 2024, Angel was sentenced to nine years in prison for the charges and is currently serving the sentence at the Indiana Department of Corrections. As of the time this video was produced, there's been no update on the health status of the injured child or the other four children. Oh my God. Um, this is what I mean when I say that there's a lot of stuff going in, going on in some of these homes, and we are, I mean, we just don't have a clue. We don't have a clue. And, um, the only way we'll have a clue is, unfortunately, something tragic happens like this right here. You know, and then it becomes, you know, main, just national news. Unfortunately for the baby, I I mean, I don't have an update, but I hope the baby is okay. And um, this, the baby is traumatized, and so are all the little children um, having rats and stuff biting on them at night when they sleep. This is unbelievable. This is one of the worst stories I've ever heard. And um, if these people were black, they would have been poster child all over national news for the damage that they've done to their children. However, when this kind of, this is when it's ugly, when racism shows its ugly head, even in cases like this. Ugh. Anyway, let me know what y'all think. Have you ever heard of something so severe, something so drastic as a newborn getting all his fingers ate off by rats? And the parents smoking crystal meth, they addicts, obviously, and, well, the mother, she was on lockdown already. But this the the sister in law making excuses, talking about they don't have no no rat problem and the kids just making that up. What in the? They all need to be mental tested. Anyway, I, enough of what I said. What y'all think? What say you? Leave your comments below. And if you like what you hear, please like and uh, subscribe and share my channel, and um, so we can get these algorithms going. Um, ugh, oh gosh, I'm, I'm sorry, y'all. I'll, I'll see you in the next video.